Yeah, Sean. I think we'd like to start off with an apology. I, I think we have a lot of apologies, and I, 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 I feel shame. I, I, I think I don't know what to call this. I think we're going to start every week with the brand new jerks, people pleaser apology of the week, and we have a couple of them. Yeah, I, I think first I would like to apologize to Colin Hanks. Yeah. From last um, episode. I'm if you listen to last week, Colin Hanks came in third on our Rank the Hanks segment. And I just want to say, Colin, I'm sorry that you're so boring and you make boring movies and you should have been an accountant or something instead <laughs> of embarrassing your father's legacy. And I want to say, Colin, I'm sorry that you made the movie Orange County because it's very, uh, very poorly made and it's one of the worst things that Jack Black has ever done. Embarrassing. You, so, uh, from the bottom of our hearts, sorry, Colin Hanks. Um, we would like to say sorry to um, also, IMDb. IMDb? Yeah, because we didn't realize that there was a movie made about the Challenger. Well, yeah, so as a backstory, I talked about the Challenger last week and how I had the pictures of the dead astronauts on my childhood bedroom. And when I took it down when I was a teenager, my mother made me put it right back up on the wall because out of, out of respect. I have also was thinking after you posted the clip online, because you posted the clip, it was very funny. Talk about an Irish Catholic bedroom as a kid. <laughs> <laughs> These dead people are going to watch you and judge you for your actions. <laughs> These dead heroes. These dead heroes are going to absolutely watch you and judge everything you do uh, for years. Because that was like eighty six, dude, or like eighty seven. I was fifteen, or like ninety five. Not ninety four. I was fifteen. The picture of the dead astronauts is just right above a dresser full of. <laughs> Funeral home <laughs> prayer cards. <laughs> I'm making out with a girl in my bedroom. I look over the picture. It's like Santos Dominos. <laughs> there's just, the, the there's just blood streaming down the the <laughs> Jesus that's on your wall. Clearly, <laughs> the lights flicker. <laughs> the bed starts to spin. It becomes uh, the Exorcist out of nowhere. Um, but yes, we didn't know there was a Challenger movie. But I gotta be honest. I wrote back to the comment. This dude commented on our post. And got, by the way, guys. Check out the clips on both me and Ray's uh, Instagram. It's at Ray B. Killing Him and at Shawnee Time on Instagram. Check us out on YouTube. Uh, check us out on TikTok, which is... At Brand New Jerks Pod. At Brand New Jerks, at Brand New Jerks Pod on TikTok. Guys, we need the, we need the engagement. But uh, uh, somebody on Instagram wrote, like, there was a movie. It was called The Challenger Disaster. Yeah. Which isn't that original. He was right. But... I said it's got to either be a documentary or it's got to be a straight-to-video or a TV movie. It was a TV movie. Which does not count. With William Hurt. Ooh, that actually that's makes it a, a little bit a more legitimate. Get. Yeah. It's a big get. So, sorry we said that there wasn't a movie, um, but not sorry for anything else that we said about The Challenger um, because it was a tragedy. And if anybody feels differently, you're wrong. I think it was tragic. I think it's a uh, very. I'm, I we're gonna go out on a limb and say it was a tragedy. It was a tragedy. We our our thoughts and our prayers go out to the victims and their families of the Challenger disaster. That's one thing that you're gonna get with us on Brand New Jerks. We are not going to <laughs> pull any punches, and we're gonna we're gonna say the things that you're afraid to say. And what happened there was kind of a bummer. Uh, yeah, I would say it was a bummer. And you may not think that. You may be heartless. But we have a heart here. And we, we're not afraid to say what the... What the I don't, we're not... You know, we're, we, we don't care about getting canceled on Brand New Jerks. <laughs> we'll say when a disaster is a disaster. How about the Titanic? Uh, that made a ton of money. The oh, actual the, Titanic disaster. Oh, yeah, that was tough. That was tough. There they, you uh, See, that's that unfiltered kind of opinion you get on brand new jerks. There's no fluff. We just say it. What about, I, I'm going to go out, you know, what about the Hindenburg? I'm going to go out on a limb here. Hindenburg. It's kind of fucked up, dude. It's messed up. It's messed up what happened in the Hindenburg. It shouldn't have happened. I also, I think Stalin was bad. Mm. Bad dude. Yeah, nobody wants to say it, except for the brand new jerks. I love how our apology sesh just turned into Hot Takes Corner. <laughs> um, lastly, I wanted to see, I have nothing to apologize for, but do you want to apologize to Mike Judge, the creator of King of the Hill, for disparaging <sighs> that cartoon? Uh, well, you should be in the same boat as me, because you agreed with me that you don't like... Yeah, but I will not apologize. I think it sucks. I will say I'm sorry, Mike Judge... That you didn't have the foresight not to make foresight, 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 
Forsyth. Forsyth is <laughs> William Forsyth. Is that an actor? <laughs> yes, it is. Really good actor. Yeah, I'm sorry you didn't have the William Forsyth. <laughs> Uh, to not make King of the Hill because I still believe it's a shitty show. And once again, that can go right into hot take. That's a real hot take. That's going to upset some people. I like that we're really doing a sorry, not sorry type of passive aggressive thing. Yeah. Yeah. I like that. We're going to get passive aggressive. Because if we act passive aggressive long enough, that'll get us to our assertive goal, I think. Uh, Well, no, I think it has to be like, we have to tamper the aggressiveness, not passive aggressive. The aggressiveness gets ramped up, and then you become assertive out of the. But well, one day at a time. One day is at what a time. Yeah, me cool. and the folks at AA say. <laughs> so easy, uh, does it? Yeah. So we are sorry, Colin Hanks and the Challenger, and sort of Mike Judge, <laughs> uh, and uh, William Forsythe. Hope you're listening, Sean. The question that I had for you today is. Who do you think is less of a people pleaser or more likely to be a jerk? A rich dude or a hot dude? A rich dude. But I have a very big... Me and my girlfriend have gotten into arguments about my issue with rich people. Um, not that I came from poverty. I came from middle, middle to lower to middle class type scenario, depending on where you come from, what side of the street. And uh, let's say middle for the sake of argument. But I've, I grew up in a rich type town. Um, but it, it, wasn't, it wasn't obscenely rich. It wasn't like the Hamptons or anything like that. It was Garden City. But I grew up with rich kids in my school, so I, you would see a lot of cool ones. But you would see a lot of people who acted like complete assholes because of the money. But I've also known a lot of nice, hot dudes. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> nice, hot dudes. I think that if I was a, if you're a woman, uh, a hot dude would have a, you'd have a way, way bit different take on the hot rich dude thing. Oh, you think so? Yeah, probably. I, I bet ugly rich dudes are way nicer to women. Yes, that's yeah, true. Than yeah. a, a poor hot dude. But I say I'll cross the board. Rich guy being more of an asshole, more of a jerk, if you will. Than hot dude, guaranteed. If you took the numbers and you polled it, I gar- guarantee you that'd be the case. I totally agree with you. Yeah, because I, I I like a hot dude. I, who doesn't? Yeah, they're you know a, a, a objectively attractive dude. Even even if it's not sexual, you are platonically more attracted to them. Probably. I only watch porn with hot dudes. Y- yeah. It, well, if I see an ugly dude in a porno, I'm changing it. That's a good point. You, yeah. You don't, you don't want. Yeah, you're like, if I, I could just tape myself. Because some people are like... <laughs> <laughs> I'll just watch the, the personal stuff I made. Yeah, I can just watch all the hours of footage that I've made having sex. Well, I've heard dudes say that they don't... Uh, they like watching porn when the guy looks like them because they want to imagine themselves in it. I disagree. I got, I'll be honest about this. I've tried this, and I always think it's going to work, and it doesn't. I've tried it a handful of times, and it's never... It n- never works for me. What do you search? <laughs> I don't actually search it. Is I don't actually search it. I search... Bald, I search, bald search, Irish guy? <laughs> doughy Irish prick? <laughs> 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 I search, I search uh, bald longshoreman from Long Island. I, I ser- always search uh, fat washed up boy <laughs> band <laughs> member. <laughs> Has sex with three hot Latinas. I, I search shrill, pale, 44-year-old man. <laughs> but I don't want to watch, like, like, if I'm fantasizing, I want to watch, like, a hot, muscular Brazilian guy. Have you ever done this? We talk about porn a lot on this podcast. I don't care. I know, you love it. <laughs> Have you ever? I, I don't. I, this I don't was my it. Trojan horse. I brought up uh, yeah, rich dude, poor dude, and I got us right into you got porn. Us right in there, yeah. yeah high work. Um, how about this? Um, super hot porn girls, or or relatably hot porn women. Mm, see, I'm the opposite of my dudes. Right. That's I want to. I want a girl that looks like she works at the supermarket. Right. Yes. Well, that's yeah. why. That's why amateur porn is such a big business. Because that's what people want. That's like it's something. It's this weird voyeuristic thing. We like. Ooh, I'm looking at somebody's. Even though it's probably produced, some of them are straight up out of like somebody's closet. But some of them, it's like, oh, this is produced, but they did a good job making it look like it's amateur. Of course, that's the best. Well, that's why when you go to a strip club, you want to see the bartenders naked the most. Um, 
Yeah, hundred percent. Like like if they like like more than the strippers because you know they're gonna get naked. The bartender is, has a more you know maybe girl next door vibe. I'd probably if I went to a strip club if they had female janitors, I would rather see them pop out a boob. <laughs> Just, just a female janitor named Jan, just Laverne just comes out. <laughs> hey, Ray. You're going to have to wait a couple minutes. It's, it's too slippery in there. Ray, it's $20 for two songs, Ray. Like a Laverne. <laughs> she has a onesie on, mm. just like a sexy, it just says Laverne on the name tag. Pushing around a garbage can. That's a, that's a weird job. Let me finish my shift and I'll give you a dance. <laughs> I've been to some. Have we done this? We did the strip club talk already. I think the low down strip clubs that you've been to. I talked about fickle fillies and 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 um oh my god bare necessities. B a r e necessities. necessities. B a r e. There was a bare assets growing up across the street from where we used to play basketball. Yeah, I think air gets thrown in as much as possible. Pretty smart. It is smart, yeah. A lot of, lot of puns for strip clubs. Bear necessities. In, it was in Long Beach, Long Island. Fickle Phillies was just... I've talked about this, I think. Was Bear Necessities Jungle Book themed? <laughs> it's just... The, that would be cool. That would be really cool. Yeah. Yeah. Is everybody wearing a loincloth? Dude, Baloo had the greatest <laughs> rack I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> Um, so yeah, going back to hot dude, rich dude, yeah, jerk wise, like brand new jerks. What would you rather? What I guess right now, at the age you are now, because you're in your 30s, I'm in my 40s. Well, if you had the opportunity, hot dude, rich dude, what would you rather be? I'm going rich dude, same here. I'd love to be. I've never been the rich. richness kind of makes up for whatever, anyway. Like it's kind of just it, it, it fills that handicap, it fills it up. I've been poor, so poor my entire life that I have such a distorted view of what having money actually is. Like I can, like, like I'll say some things are rich people stuff, and people are like, "Nah, that's not like like savings accounts, more than one belt, um, <laughs> two pairs of sneakers. This car has cup holders. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god, are these heated seats? Actually, heated seats is kind of luxury." The heated seats. I had heated seats once. That was a wild year. You want to hear real luxury? You ever go to a house with heated floors? No. Heated floors. That's actual rich people shit. Though. It is. No, 100%. That's what I'm saying. I, I, th- I think there's like middle class people that probably have two belts. Um, yeah, I would, say there's, I would say there's people in bankruptcy that have two belts. One for their pants and one to hang themselves with. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can't. I can't hang myself with my one belt. It's, it's too flimsy. It's yeah, gonna, it's gonna. I'm like, I'm gonna. Or fall down. Don't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, mean, I can't. I can't be hanging in my house with my dick out. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah your, your regular hanging becomes autoerotic asphyxiation by default because you don't have an extra belt. That's probably. There's probably been a lot. <laughs> A lot of misdiagnosed autoerotic asphyxiation. Because they just grabbed the belt they were wearing yeah. and the pants came down? You're probably right. What a, <laughs> what a hilarious suicide mishap that is. We need, <laughs> we need Cyrillect on the case. <laughs> just get a... First, uh, we're going to have a forensic guy on the podcast and he's going to be like, what the hell are you, you guys talk- talking about? <laughs> this is not what we need to be investing money into. <laughs> <laughs> Finding out about a bunch of uh, wrongful, <laughs> wrongful, <laughs> wrongful autoerotic. It doesn't matter. They killed themselves. That's all that matters. We're definitely using this as a clip, and I'm going to have such a hard time spelling a fix. Asphyx- uh, asphyx- asphyxiation. Asphyxiation. You want to try it now? A- asphyxiation. Yeah. A s f i x i a. No, no. <laughs> Whatever, dude. I don't but, even know if I have it but right. But the confidence with which I went for it. <laughs> it was really good. Thank you. I, that, was a, that was a good brand new jerk Thanks, move right dude. there. That was assertive. I'm getting better. Uh, uh, you know what? To be honest, I don't even know if I know it. Asphyxiate. A-S-P-H-Y-X-I-A-I-A-S-A-S-P-H-Y-S-I-X-I-X-I. A-T-I-O-N. Country of origin, please. 
Uh, Could you use it in a sentence? <laughs> Transylvania? <laughs> Should I look? Oh, we don't have my. I don't have my phone. I would look it up. Well, I um, I'll probably Google it if I do. Yeah, I figured before it. you post the clip, you would just. Or I might just spell it my own way. I'll yeah, figure something that'd out. Be funny. Everybody's <laughs> 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 like, like "Raise dyslexic." But I've never. You know what? Uh, this is this is pretty embarrassing, and I don't. I was thinking about being poor, and I always grew up wearing my older brother's clothes. So, like, dirty pullovers that have already had bus fumes all over them. Mm-hmm. And, like, I think about, like, like always knowing I'm poor. This is weird. I just got hand-me-downs recently from my dad. Oh, did you? He's not dead. <laughs> he just lost weight. So he gave me his old fat guy clothes? Yeah. That's a tough. That's tough. It's a tough one. That's definitely a tough one. I I'm I'm sorry they had to go through that, but it's but the same way that we talked about having goal shirts, they should be goal shirts for the opposite reason. I don't want to get any more clothes from my dad. Well, it's 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 a little embarrassing because I feel like when you're a when you're a fat little kid, it's your parents' fault. Yeah. When you're a fat you're adult, adult with skinny parents, it's like ugh. It's your fault. Yeah. That's a great point. After a while, you have to become... Like, the same way that, like, when I was a kid, I can blame me being... I'm a really picky eater. Like, you know that. I think yeah. you know that. I've well, gotten better over time. You don't time. eat vegetables. I do eat more vegetables than I used to. I, okay. eat weight. I used to eat zero. I, eat my, I started from zero. I started from the bottom, and now I'm here. I used to eat zero... <laughs> zero it's my Drake, this is my Drake story. Oh, there you go. Um, and then now I actually eat, I'll eat green beans, I'll eat Brussels sprouts, I'll eat uh, uh, broccoli, I'll eat, so, but, and I'll eat um, baby spinach, oh, like wow. salad. So, so. What about, what about full size spinach? That's too much. I can't handle it. Um, <laughs> but anyway, my, when we were younger, my dad would like half acidly try to get us to eat. My, or my dad and my mom. They'd be like, well, you better eat it. You're going to have a rude awakening. But by example, they weren't eating this, those things. So we were just like, we don't have to eat them. We're not going to eat them. And I was super picky for years and years. And I was a big, fat guy. And I'm still chubby, but I, like, I lost some weight because I like changed how I was eating. But like, I, you're right about it. When you get to be an adult, it becomes your fault. Well, I don't know you as a big, fat guy. You don't. You don't. No, you don't. I was like, here's the thing. But when I say big, fat guy, I wasn't 400 pounds. I was, I was 270 pounds. But well, it was big enough where I was a fat... I, told, I think I told you this. I was... I was in the fat guy realm. I was in the. I told, I told you people go. People will go. I go. Yeah, I'm ah, too big. And they go. Yeah, but it suits you. <laughs> I think we said about that, right? Yeah. It suits you. You know, it doesn't suit me. Dying. Well, that's that's what my 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 dad looks great now, and he's thin. And it was just a hard thing to go through him being like, "Hey, I don't fit any more of these extra larges if you want them." And I was like, "I'm not digging your fucking fat guy clothes." <laughs> oh, it's, it's kind of a decent sweater. <laughs> you're going through it like you're at a thrift shop. Yeah. <laughs> that is great. Your dad lost weight, though. Yeah, your dad is a him. character and a half. He is. He. Um. I, I was. I was thinking about a story, and and I don't know how it relates to people pleasing, but it's probably something that fucked me up a little bit. Yeah. Um, <laughs> trying to impress your dad. It well. So. A lot of these stories that I have about my dad, they make him come off sounding like a tough guy or like a mean dad, but he wasn't. No, but you're pretty clear in saying that he wasn't. He was just like a fun partier who had a lot of bad ideas. <laughs> and when me and my brother were younger, I was probably about seven, eight. My brother is 13. Or would that be it? Or he was probably like 12 and I was seven. So we, my dad lived in this apartment across the street from, from the bar. And one day he gets so mad how hard me and my brother are arguing that he leaves, comes back with a Kmart bag, throws it in this spare room that he had, and said, go figure it out. We go into the spare room. It was boxing gloves. This is like out of a movie. I know, dude. So we, we put on these boxing gloves. My brother's five years older than me. And at that age, that's a big difference. So he just beat the hell out of me Your with these did. gloves. Yeah, he just pounded me. Yeah, but we started doing it all the time though. And it got to a point where it was fun, and most of the time he wasn't beating me up when he was mad at me. We were kind of playing, sparring, boxing. Right. So like then, you kind of did figure it out. Like you like came into your own. Yeah. Okay. So then my dad had the bright idea 
to invite some of his friends over from I, the bar. I want this montage so badly. Like this movie montage of you guys learning how to box and your dad just <laughs> watching from a distance. <laughs> I don't even know if he was wa- watching from a distance, <laughs> but or from the bar across the street, he was he was popping over every <laughs> once in a while to make sure we were still alive. And he had his two buddies come over and his one friend had kids the same age as me and Mike, my brother. And we, they had matches. My brother fought the older one. I fought the younger one. And the older dudes were betting on our fights. <laughs> and just drinking and creating their own sport. It was probably around the time it is now when there's no NFL. <laughs> And, you know, the Penguins were out of the playoffs. So it makes sense. This is so much more morally messed up than bum fights. Remember bum fights? Yeah. With that guy. What's his name? Uh, uh, Well, there was no famous. You might be thinking of Kimbo Slice. Kimbo Slice. Yeah, I thought he was bum fight. He wasn't a bum fight. He was just beating the shit out of people (laughs) in street fights, making a ton of money. (laughs) Yeah. No, this is um, this is child abuse (laughs) is is what we're talking about. So years later, I run into one of the the kids, the the guy that I fought, and I was I was friends with him like years later, and I and I forgot it was him. I didn't know it was him until my brother told me. So I run into him at a bar. This is probably like five six years ago, and we're, we start talking about it, and it's not like a fun conversation. Like it starts off funny. You're like, "Yo, do you remember when our dad used to make us box, and they would get drunk?" In that spare room. <laughs> By the end, it's like, oh, I'll box you right now. <laughs> well, well here's, here's, here's what I said to him, dude. We're sitting there. And I said, man, if I, uh, if I remember correctly, dude, I, uh, I think I won that night. And he goes, nah, dude. I don't think any of us won that night. <laughs> <laughs> and, dude, me and him just both start dying laughing. <laughs> no chance he's not also in therapy. Oh, there's no way. Oh, my God. That's what a perfect thing to say. I actually think he's done some jail time, which makes sense. Totally. He'd probably kick my the ass fact now. That you haven't. It's remarkable. You know how proud of yourself you should be for not doing any jail time after that happens? That kind of shit happens. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Sean. I had my, you kind of I feel like he said the perfect thing in the perfect moment with you. Like he, that was almost like a jerk store moment for him. But you weren't being a jerk. You were just having a conversation. We were just goofing because we were buddies at the time. But, but, but I didn't know it was him. Like right. until my brother told me years later. And I was like, oh, I know that dude. We're like friends. And the thing that I would like to know is whether or not my dad bet on me. <laughs> Why don't you ask him? Maybe we could call him and ask him. I'm not calling him. I already <laughs> talked to him once today. That's enough. <laughs> Maybe but another time. When I bring that stuff up, he always has the attitude of like, oh, it wasn't the you guys are you're you're exaggerating on that. Oh, we, yeah, we were we were fucked up back then. But, you know, we weren't that bad. Yeah, so whose recollection you're gonna trust? Yeah. Yours or yeah. you know or the states. <laughs> the brain damage that I have <laughs> from from boxing at seven, eight years old. Oh my god. Well I I, I, mean, I it's dads can be what do we have like we have like, how we're affected by dad section on the on the podcast. <laughs> I have something that's like a that's dad the, story. Oh, the daddy issue section. <laughs> but it's not even it's not even that it's not it's not like that. It's it's a little bit different, but it's also it kind of shows where I come from because uh, or why you get into comedy. Because when I, I don't think, stop me if I said this story already, because I re- No, I don't care. Just say it again. I know. Say it again. Yeah, you're right. Um, when I was growing up, my dad would go to OTB all the time. We'd go to the track all the time uh, at Belmont Racetrack, right? And my dad wasn't like, like lose the house kind of gambler, but he was like, he'd bet money on the horses, you know? Yeah. And he loved it. But he, he was like his pastime. Like, he'd be like a couple bucks a race, but he would bet every day, you know? Anyway, uh, the Belmont Racetrack was around the corner from my house. So on our block, there was a, a guy who was a trainer, uh, not a trainer, a um, agent for jockeys that lived on my block. I won't say his name, but he lived on my block. And he had a bunch of famous jockeys. And he had this one guy who was my dad's favorite jockey, this guy named Jerry Bailey, who was like legendary jockey. Okay. Right? The guy that now I think he's a commentator for New York NYRA or Racing Association. Anyway, we had a block party when I was younger. I was probably like, I don't know, 10 tops. And... <laughs> My dad had the. My dad was the guy who was like, 
he would try to go, he would go for the laugh and he was super funny, but like he didn't, my dad didn't, it was almost coming from like a comics perspective. He didn't give a shit. Like he just didn't care. Yeah. Like he was like kind of like, he's the guy who told me like, Hey, it's all bullshit. Like he didn't, didn't was care. Was he offensive what at all? Well, th- this is what happens. So <laughs> unknowingly. So what happens is they're getting a volleyball game going. Like a vo- they want to get a volleyball game going and they, and then it's like, uh, parents on the blog, my dad's there, I get the guy, the, the, the agent for jockeys, and Jerry Bailey comes to the blog, uh, from a blog party. And from what I remember, my dad was pretty excited about that. So I think in an attempt to like, impress Jerry Bailey, they're all figuring out the volleyball thing, and they realize they have an uneven amount of people. So my dad, thinking that it'll be like, hey, like, oh, hey we're all laughing moment, says, that's okay, Jerry, you can sit on my shoulders. <laughs> <laughs> and everybody just quietly looked at my dad. It bombed. And my and the guy who was the agent never spoke to my I don't think he ever spoke to my dad again. Are you shitting me? Uh, I don't think it, it bombed. It it full on bombed. <laughs> it was like it was like if you if uh, uh, R. Kelly came to your block party and, and your dad was like, I don't want to take a piss. <laughs> <laughs> R. Kelly asked to use the bathroom. You're like, hey, why don't you just, just piss on my daughter? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> it was like, talk about, the guy's what? I don't know. He's probably, what, five foot two, five foot one? Yeah. And my dad, I think, wanting to impress him to be funny, said it, but then without realizing that this guy, I guess, had no sense of humor or was pretty, I don't know, sensitive. But you think a guy who probably made about... Three hundred million dollars, being that because he was that short and racing on horses and being a jockey would, after a while, get used to short like, jokes. Also, dog, yeah, I was just gonna say that you've never been called short. Right, right, exactly. Yeah, no, but no. it was maybe not the best thing to say. So I don't know, man. So uh, he, I'll never forget that because I remember. Is your dad a tall guy? No, he was. <laughs> like, he's like he was like my height, a little bit, a little bit taller than me, maybe a little See, shorter. That makes it funnier. Totally, it would be rude if I was doing it. Yes, uh, yeah, you're right. He, he, uh, yeah, exactly. If you had a plethora of height, or a, well, I don't know what you would call it, a, a cornucopia of inches, a plethora, plethora. Is that what you said? I don't think you know what the plethora is. That's from Three Amigos. Um, <clears throat> anyway, Three Amigos ref, well, love it. Yeah, but. I thought it, I thought it was funny. I, I think it's, you know, I think it's I think it's pretty hilarious. But my dad was he was good at timing, so he said he was said he probably said it at the right exact moment and everything, and it bombed. It Sometimes ate, that happens. It ate it. Yeah, absolutely. I do have speaking of family, I have a pretty great jerk store moment this week, and it involves my nine year old nephew. Okay. Who is a really great kid. I'm not going to say his name. He lives across the country, right? He is uh, in a little league out there. And he's the type of kid where he likes he likes the little league, but he's not, like, super athletic. So he's not, like, losing his mind if they lose. And he's not really, like, he'll practice, but he's kind of just doing it for the fun of it. Like, he kind of has that. Like, he's pretty emotionally he kinda, pretty emotionally mature that was me. for a nine-year-old. Yeah, I was the same way. Like, I just wanted to be around. And I was actually getting nervous because I was like, oh, I'm going to mess this up, whatever, you know. I actually didn't even have fun. I just did it. So, uh, same here. Like I, I enjoyed certain aspects of like kid sports, you know, whatever it was. So anyway, he enjoys little league for like the hang. But whatever league he's in, there's this one kid. Who, speaking of short, once there's another segue. <clears throat> speaking, of, this kid's like he looks like a five year old apparently, and they're all like nine. He's a really tiny kid, and he's he's like, he's like uh, out of bad news bears. He's just a little asshole. Like, he just won't stop picking mm-hmm. on everybody. He picks on my nephew. He won't stop critiquing everybody for how they're playing, uh, uh, saying you suck, this, blah, blah, whatever it is, right? So, uh, finally, after, like, a couple months of, like, abuse, uh, my, and not, not just to my nephew, he's been picking on everybody on the team. So, my nephew, like, stands up to him and says, hey, like, he was really mature about it. He's like, stop. Like, don't, don't talk about me like that. That's not, not cool. Like, stop. Yeah. Like, he did the thing you're supposed to do, right? So, the kid wouldn't stop. The kid keeps going. And they're out in the outfield one day, and they're uh, and they're playing. And I, I, he's probably the shortstop. And my my nephew's I don't know one of the outfielders, fielders. And he's my the kid says something to my nephew, and he goes, you know what? <laughs> he goes, I think you have a small heart, because you're so small. Maybe that's why your heart's so small, and that's why you act this way. Damn, kid's nine. That kid's cold blooded. And he even said it better than I just said it. He goes, I think you're acting so small because you have a small heart because you're so small. Whatever he said, or you're tiny because you have a tiny you're tiny and have a tiny heart, or something like that. Jesus. It's pretty prolific for a nine year old kid. Did he get punched? Nope. Kid shut right up the rest of the rest of the season. Yeah. 
He Pretty probably good. probably did some reflecting after that. He probably did. He, yeah. probably, he had like, like a, a kid life crisis, Just an existential <laughs> crisis at nine. <laughs> he starts. The kid goes on like a like a like a, a backpacking trip through Europe because my, my nephew <laughs> said. <laughs> <laughs> he needed to go find himself. He wanted to get his own eat, pray, love. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a nine-year-old just going to like a some uh, like Swami type. Uh, what do they call them? Uh, the gurus. <laughs> oh, he's, he's, he's just at a monastery. <laughs> mm. So your, your your sister gets a call from uh, his mom, like <laughs> like why is he watching a why is my son watching a bunch of Tony Robbins videos? <laughs> Why, why does he feel as though he needs to become a better person at nine? What did your son say to him? What did he say to him? So, but I thought that was pretty great. And I even messed it up. I should have gotten the exact wording because no. even he like wrote it better than I just said it. It was like, I think, I think you're... This kid's you like a young Whitman. I think you have a small heart because you're so tiny or something crazy like that where it's like... Ooh. He roasted him? He roasted him in the, in the middle of the baseball game. Pretty badass. And they're on the same team. Same team. Oh, but nice. this kid would pick on everybody. He's one of those kids. I, I always, I always am very intrigued by a little bully. A little bully obviously comes. It's like a junior Napoleonic complex where it's like, and I wonder what happens in your life because it actually fits in the podcast perfectly. It's like the Napoleonic complex, which you know, thanks to the internet, we now know that Napoleon. What it's a, kind of a myth. He wasn't even that short. Really? Yeah. Apparently, he was. I think he was five seven or something. Like that's pretty short, but not. When you have a whole thing named after you for being a short guy, he'd have trouble on a dating app. <laughs> he'd lie. He'd lie about his height on a dating app. Nope. Nope. <laughs> Napoleon on hinge. Yeah. Napoleon, <laughs> just him with like a like a, a saber, like just him we, with a saber and a horse behind we him. We should that create. Would be his. We should create a hinge for, Napo- for Napoleon. No, I don't want to do that. The hinge. We'll create a Tinder for Napoleon. <laughs> <laughs> just. <laughs> <laughs> you up? It's Napoleon. Yeah. <laughs> Big things come in small packages. <laughs> Ask me anything. Fluent in French. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know any languages? Yeah, French. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Great even, strategic military mind. Yeah, he'd have the greatest. He'd have the greatest profile up until the point it said how, how much, how high, how tall are you? That's cr- <laughs> that's crazy. That I don't know anything about Napoleon. Besides that, he was French and he was short. He, it was the revol- not the French Revolution, right? Wasn't he? He was a general in France. That's what I'm saying. What you're doing right now, you stumbling over this. Yeah. The first thing that you knew <laughs> was that he's short. Well, that's what everybody does. That's what I'm saying. But he, but like I said, that's he doesn't deserve Can it. Can you imagine just being famous for something like that? Yeah, I couldn't tell you a battle he won or anything like that. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. So wild, and he was like. Famous, clearly, like he well, did some wild shit or some something. I have no you idea. This would he have been an average general if he wasn't short? You know what I'm saying? Like if it was like a normal height, mm. but he wasn't that short, especially for back then. I think men were shorter. Yeah, somebody's like, he's not that good of a general. Yeah, dude, but he's five seven. <laughs> Most generals are five ten or above. Well, I think that might be part of the deal. Really? I think he probably was a decent general. Nah, maybe not. Maybe he was like a phenom. I don't even know, but. It'd be funny to see <laughs> figures through history, their dating profiles. We should look up. Maybe I, we, should, we should start just creating them. <laughs> just George Washington's dating profile. I, I want to. Um... <laughs> so Napoleon would be on Tinder. You He'd know, be on he, Tinder. Yeah, he's all over the place. He's a general. He'd be lying. George Washington. He'd be looking for something serious after his wife Thomas got Jeff- Thomas Jefferson would be on Black People Meet. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! Um, George Washington. He seemed like he was married for a while. I don't think he was known for being uh, uh, kind of uh, duplicitous, a little nefarious. So uh, I bet he was. Yeah, I bet you they all were. Wasn't that probably yeah. just par for the course for those guys back then? Yeah, they all had their guma. Yeah, yeah, the like revolutionary war guma, guma, just on the battlefield. Hey, I, honey, I have to. We have we got another meeting about the revolution. I got to. Uh, yeah. I, it's gonna be. I'm gonna be on for days. That's probably. That's probably why those those guys could easily cheat back then. Oh yeah. They, they just to get to the meeting. It's a two day horse ride. 
There's no way on the, he's not stopping off somewhere at your grandma's house it's on the side. Just smashing something out after she churns butter. <laughs> Yeah. I think that'd be. That must have been easy. like when you had no cell phones, no form of communication. The only there's no way you didn't have any women looking at your phone at that point. So it was easier to cheat during the Revolutionary War era than it is now. I would say a hundred percent. Hundred percent. They're not going to look through your telegrams. But then there's also not a lot of options. That's the tough thing. How was there not? What I, do you mean? I mean, oh, there mean, was like, like ten your... people back then. Yeah, well, less of a population. <laughs> Yeah. Was there a million people back then? And you'd also want to cheat that, that way... Was, that was the dumbest thing I could have said. <laughs> I'm so dumb. This is, I just said... <laughs> we're really, we're we're really showing our, showing our, our lack of intelligence here. <laughs> <laughs> I do like the idea of throwing these guys on apps and seeing how they would do. George Washington, odd-looking guy. He'd do great. They all kind of had a certain look. You, it's, I, I'm, I'm actually going to disagree with you. I think it was harder to cheat then because you wouldn't have the motivation. You'd be like, oh, yeah, I, d- I definitely think I can fuck Agnes, but she's like a three-day horse ride away. <laughs> yeah. No thanks. Also, let's be honest, 80% of them had syphilis, probably. <laughs> they just all have these things that, like, yeah, there's a thing on it, but I don't know what it is. They didn't care. They didn't have dude. medical, they're like, let's just go with it. Half of them were walking without walking around without toes. Yeah, you're right. His fucking, most of their teeth were made of wood or whatever. They were living to like 40. I don't know. That's where the over the hill party came in because we made it past forty. They're like, we got to get you some streamers and some balloons. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit! But yeah, I honestly believe um, Napoleon. Yeah, I would say I don't know if he maybe he was a great general, but would he have been thought of that way if he didn't wasn't short? Well, that's what we need to do for. Well, look it up for the podcast. next episode. Yeah, then we'll just apologize to Napoleon because that's what we. I will not apologize to that short little king. <laughs> I had, you know, he gets what I was, lifts. He gets those lifts they advertise on TikTok. I never understand the advertisements for those lifts because I'm like, they're like, oh, to get girls, you get these lifts. And being a short guy, I was like, oh, at first I'm like, oh, I kind of get it. But then I was like, no, I don't because at one point you're going to have to take your shoes off. Yes. Well, that, that's what I never understand about showing up to a date 30 pounds heavier. Well, yeah. Well, 100%. I, 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 it must just be. You're count either you're a psychopath or you're accounting on them not noticing or you're delusional. Yeah. And you're not, don't get me wrong. Some people are you get everybody gets very insecure about their looks or a lot most people do I think. So maybe if you're only like ten pounds off, fifteen pounds off, and somebody's like, oh yeah, whatever. But you might be in your head about it. But if you're full on showing a picture of yourself from ten years prior on your dating profile, they're gonna notice a difference. I it's, told it, you what I do. It's like time traveling. You know what I You do. do a worse picture, which I think is a really smart idea. I post idea. worse pictures. Great idea. Pictures of me at like a coin star. <laughs> pictures just, you know, when they when they finally meet me, <laughs> the all, the meeting, we can only go up. Yes. Pictures of you next to the Hot Peppers uh, lunch deal sign. Yeah. <laughs> Pointing at it. Pointing like, at it like... seven ninety five. Mm, like Like rubbing your hands together like a hobo. <laughs> <laughs> mm, gonna do some fine eating today. Holding a $10 bill. Seven dollars. <laughs> A whole burrito bowl. I'm going to get money back from this tent. <laughs> Which, by the way, if anybody is in Astoria, Queens, make sure to go to Hot Peppers on Steinway Avenue, an unofficial sponsor of the Brand New Jerks podcast, yep. uh, because we go there so much they have given us free meals, so I consider that sponsorship. I think, yeah, I I, I 100% back that. They're amazing. They are a startup business. They're, it's like uh, Mexican Grill to the, the highest level. We, we enjoy it. We Delicious. have it about, I would say we have it on a, on a good week, like two times a week, at least. Yeah. We were going like every day for a couple weeks straight, and then we kind of slowed down, and then we went back. Just they, they make Chipotle look like raggedy-ass hospital food. Yeah, they make Chipotle look like regular McDonald's. Yeah. Yeah. You were, you were mentioning, um, backtracking a little here, the mean little boy. I kind of had a jerk store moment where I didn't say anything, and I wish I did. I was working as a janitor at this church slash school, and the school is for, like, uppity kids. Like, like rich kids? Yeah, like Adam Driver's son went there. It's somewhere in Brooklyn. and it's Oh, just, so this is recent. Yeah, it's all these spoiled... What's the ages? Grammar school? I Must would be. say, like, f- kindergarten, first-ish grade. Oh, okay. And I'm walking past... I'm working as a janitor, so I'm already not thrilled about my day. 
and I just hear this kid say, walk right past him, says, hi, fat man. And it took everything in my power to not just blow it all up and be like, fuck you, you little overprivileged cocksucker who has more money in his bank account than I do. I'll kill you, dude. I wanted so hard just to... I wanted. To, I, I almost paid another kid in that class to punch him in his face. <laughs> but I know my money is so much less than their allowance. Let me ask you this. Do you think he was trying to be insulting or he was doing that like... Uh, that kid diarrhea of the mouth thing where they just say, blurt things out with that, that just, they're not trying to be an asshole. I don't Kids just give, say whatever. I don't give a fuck. I'm reading zero, to- zero context. Hated that kid. Well, that high fat man, he knew it was wrong. Do you know, do you know how I know this is wrong? Uh, another comedian worked there with me and I told him the story and he goes, yeah, he said the same thing to me. And he's a, and he's a fat kid. Another fat guy. Yeah. And the little kid said that to, to my friend. That means who's also his parents comic. have issues with fat people, and they bring it up in front of him, and then he put it into practice in public. Well, all I all I said is I started walking. I was like, "Wow, that was very rude," and yeah. kept going. You know what you probably could have done? To be honest, you could have been like, what, "What was the kid's name? You remember?" I didn't know their name. Was it Adam Driver's son? I wish. I didn't. <laughs> I didn't I'd be like, I'd be like, Star, like Wars, "Star Wars is lame." Nerd, <laughs> fucking... But you pro- you would have been within your rights to turn around and go. Uh, Timmy, <laughs> whatever his name was, Timmy, that wasn't very nice. You don't talk to people that way. I'm gonna either I'm gonna talk to you, not I'll talk to your teacher, but you'd be within your rights to be like, don't talk to me that, that way, please. If you were respectful, yeah, you could have said that, but not fuck you, you little shit. I should have said that. The second thing, well, you would have been fired immediately. You wanted to burn it down. I'm not. I'm not. When I was only making like sixteen dollars an hour, and I'm not a. I'm, I wasn't gonna tell. You, know you could have said him. there is no Santa Claus. Oh, I should have said that. Talk about that's some cold blooded shit right there, but it would have worked. I should have said your parents don't love you and you're being raised by an au pair. <laughs> Which probably would have been spot on. Yeah. You could have just taken the guess. Yeah. It would have been it would have been spot on. But I didn't because I'm a nice person and I just said that was rude and I did see his his teacher heard it. He was right next to his teacher. And what so the I teacher said. I think she said something to him, but I just kept moving because I was a little embarrassed because the teacher was kinda hot. Yeah. Oh yeah, that probably did it because it was in yeah. front of the teacher. It was, a, it, was a, it was in front of other kids. You could have been like, "It was a rough." You should have Billy Madison and be like, <laughs> "Well, I, I, th- I think my friend Kyle said something to him because Kyle didn't give a shit. There, he was, he was walking around. He used to get yelled at for just drinking cappuccino all day, walking around, you know, just talking to everybody. <laughs> like he had no. We, we were supposed to be like seen and not heard at that job. They told you that? No, but like that it kind of implied. Felt, it kind of felt like that. Like <gasps> the, the teachers were all kind of weirded out by us, and it was definitely clearly like I felt like lower class. You know, <sighs> I think the doorman job can be like that, but not not entirely, but kind of. Yeah. Um, but I think Kyle like scared scared the kid after, like because he called him like fat, and he might have done like a ah. Like, did he really? <laughs> that's what he said. Yeah, and I believe him because this dude, this dude's hilarious. He didn't care. No, he didn't care. None of us, none of us truly cared. But I, I was probably having one of my days where I'm just already so defeated that I just cleaned a toilet and yeah. I'm hung over and I'm walking around in it's dirty the worst clothes. scenario. Yeah, you know. But dude, I had Megan's, Megan's friend's daughter when I met her for the first time said, "Why don't you have any hair on your head?" <laughs> 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 and I, and then for some reason, I went into the mode of like. I have to actually answer for some reason because she's very cute yeah. and she's being precocious. And I was like, it kind of was like, it hurt a little bit. Yeah. But I was like, well, sometimes that I, I went into like almost like I was describing the birds and the bees to her. Like I, I went into that tone, not describing that, yeah. but I was like, well, sometimes this is what happens to people. They what if you did lose their hair when they get older and they, what? What if you did just randomly <laughs> explain the birds like, and the bees? When like. a man loves a woman very, very much. <laughs> <laughs> and her father is bald headed. <laughs> they procreate and they usually make a kid that loses there his hair. There is an X chromosome and a Y chromosome. Are you st- paying attention? Stay up for this. You <laughs> asked. Um, yes, but she asked it inquisitively. And that's defensible. She didn't say, she say hello, Hi, baldy. bald man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hello, baldy. Yeah, baldy. yeah. <laughs> hello, bald man. Baldy's a funny insult. Baldy? Yeah. And he does it baldy. Yeah. Go to hell, Baldy. That did very well. A clip about the, uh, the Mount Rushmore of bald-headed dudes. Oh, yes. Bald white dudes. 
People, you guys came back with some great ones. Larry David. Somebody said Stanley Tucci. We didn't even think of Stanley Tucci. Ooh, Tucci's great. Tucci's fantastic. BWD is bald white dudes. BWD, go for it. You don't have to worry about it. You still got your quaff going. I'm 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 Herman Munstering. I told you that. Yeah, but that's not bad though. Do we have Do we have time to go through a generation separation? Because I have something prepared. I think we do. I think we should do. Do we do a, a, a little Rorschach type scenario? We do the yes. one the one and one. We go back and forth. Well, well, no. I mean, I mean, we go item by item. Yeah, I saying, yeah. yeah. I, I have I have I have five prepared. Perfect. And what we're doing today is. Oh, we didn't do jerk of the week though. You want to do that quick? Who do we have jerk of the week? I don't think we have a jerk of the week. Everybody's been being really good to us. <laughs> the shooter on the subway. I said we could tell that jerk. They just caught him. 25-year-old guy. Oh, did they? He shot the guy in the chest un- unprovoked. The guy was taking the subway because he didn't want to go on, on Ubers, his family said. I'm like, yeah, that's what everybody does. That's a, that's a little... Some photographer from... I think from, he's more than a jerk. He's way more of a jerk. He's a felon. Well, it's a little bit tongue-in-cheek when we say jerk <laughs> of the week. I'm not saying... Yeah, he's a fucking evil <laughs> asshole. Piece of shit. <laughs> Piece of shit of the week. Next week's Hitler. Yeah. <laughs> a real jerk. Hitler of the week. We yeah. amp it up. Hitler of the week. Hitler. <laughs> just, uh, <laughs> it's him every week. We just get real predictable. This Hitler. week's Hitler of the week. You're never going to guess. Hitler. <laughs> uh, okay, so let's do generation separation. Now. It's like that old joke, real quick. It's like that old joke. It's one of my favorite like street jokes I ever heard. Or it might have actually been a Norm MacDonald joke, is when he said, Lou Gehrig died of Lou Gehrig's disease. Yeah. <laughs> Don't you think he would have saw that coming? <laughs> That's my one of my <laughs> love that joke. Um, okay, so the generation separation, this one, uh, it's cartoons. And I'm really curious about this because these are cartoons from like my childhood. Okay. And and the last one I think is the one that we'll definitely know and have a good conversation about. The rest of them I probably won't know. Okay. Now let me ask you this before you say them, do you think I'm not gonna know them at all? Or I'll just barely have any kind of... I'm going to tell you what I know about each of these. But do you think there's some that I'm going to be like, I have no clue what that is? Like with when I told you New Coke and you were like, does that just mean brand I think new the, drugs? Yeah. I think you're going to go 60% knowing. So okay. three out of five. Right. Okay. You'll that, know. One is 100%. That's a good trip up percentage though. One is 100% obviously you know. Okay. Um, hey Arnold. I know what, what it looks like. It's with that chick with the spiky hair and the green dress. Right. Isn't that it? it? It's not a chick. It's no, no, a dude. no. Her, her, but his girlfriend or whatever has. They have like weird. Um, well, they have weird shaped heads. I don't know what. Yeah. I, hey, I can't picture Hey Arnold himself, but I can picture the girl. Hey Arnold was where I gained all of my knowledge about what it was like to live in New York. <laughs> <laughs> because he lived in New York City. <laughs> I had no clue about that. Yeah. I know nothing about Hey Arnold. He was a football headed kid. I'm thinking of, now I'm thinking of Stewie Griffin when you said football head. But uh, I know, isn't there a girl in it that has like a green dress and she has like kind of Lisa Simpson-ish type of hair? Kind of, but like a little bit more uh, avant- uh, um, weirder. The main girl in it was a girl named Helga Pataki and she was super mean and had a v- very secret, unhealthy obsession with Arnold. Okay, see, I know nothing about the show. Nothing about it. But I've heard of it. I know I've heard of it. What's it? It's, it's- hey, Arnold always think- makes me think of different strokes. See, that's generation separation right there, uh, which was uh, Gary Coleman. Yeah. Do you know different strokes? Yeah, yeah. The world yeah. don't move to the beat of just one drum. Uh, right be right for you, may not be right for that's some. That's 100% correct, yeah. We've sang different strokes on this that's podcast true. before. <laughs> the Hey Arnold sh- cartoon, one of my all-time favorite cartoons. He wow. was ju- he was just He was just like a really like down-to-earth kid. He lived with his grandparents, and they, uh, they owned a boarding house. And it was uh, it was very diverse. Granted, the main character was a little white dude, but he was also orphaned by his parents. I think so. He had a little, you know, he had a little edge to him. He wasn't just a, you know, a little Batman a little story, white, rich Batman kid. origin story for Hey Arnold. <laughs> but like, but like his best friend was a black dude. You know, uh, there was uh, like, you know, d- so pretty diverse people that lived in his building. I'm like thinking as you're saying this, I'm thinking it has elements of Doug in there. Doug from. Well, which brings me to the next one, Doug. So you do know? Uh, Doug. I know Doug. I think they also revamped Doug. I think there was a newer version of Doug. Patty Mayonnaise. There was Disney and Doug and Dieter. Disney Doug. I knew Nickelodeon Doug. There is not a character named Dieter. Skeeter. Ske- there was a Skeeter. Skeeter. Yeah, there's a Skeeter. Well, I was, you couldn't make the connection from Dieter to Skeeter. No, because Skeeter is very memorable because of Skeet. <laughs> well, to you. Yeah, his you're obsessed name. with sperm. 
I am. I love it. I love it. It, um, it's what makes the world go round. It's what keeps the world. It's the glue. Spinning. That, literally the glue. That's it's the glue that holds society together. Um, Doug, I know. Now let me ask you this: Is there any differences from Doug and the Disney one to the? I don't think. Is there any char- new characters or? I stopped watching at the Disney one. I got a little too old for for Doug. See, there was a Nickelodeon one from back in the day. Yeah, I loved that's, it. it was that's great. what I watched. It was do 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 do. So you know Doug? I know Doug. How old were you watching Doug? Were you a little too old watching Doug? About nineteen. You were nineteen watching <laughs> Doug. <laughs> I don't know. No, I'm telling you, there was Damn, an older. Damn, Doug. No, it was probably like I, I would say maybe. Doug would come on on Nickelodeon, and I was watching other shows there, so it'd be like Doug was maybe early 12, 90s. 13. Oh, early 90s? Yeah, so I was, I was like tw- 13, 12. Okay. Early 90s, I was like 12. It was probably like the last one, last bastion of me watching a cartoon. Doug was solid. Doug was really solid. Hated the main character, though. Doug? Yeah. Why? I just thought he was lame. I Patty was, Mayonnaise. If they ever made a live-action Doug, it would star Colin Hanks. They'd shave his head and make him play Doug. <laughs> he, Patty Manet, I liked her. I liked her voice. Yeah, she's like, she, Doug, I don't even know. She had like a Marge Simpson thing going how on. How is it? Doug, what are we supposed to do, Doug? I don't think that's <laughs> it. <laughs> I think that's pretty spot on. What are we supposed to do? I don't remember what she would say. How me? How that, me? That was my Marge Simpson. So you know Doug. Okay. I know Doug. That was one I thought. Well, I, I figured. See, I was judging from Hey Arnold. And I was like, wow, he might not hit 60%. Um, Rugrats. Rugrats, I know pretty well. Everybody yeah, knows Rugrats. Yeah, Rugrats. Yeah. My, you know what also? Well, my sister's a couple years younger than me. So you have to make up that coverage as well. So Rugrats with Tommy and, um, and the twins and the, 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 the evil one, the older one. Angelica. Angelica. And then, yeah. Rugrats reminded me of, like, we used to have a thing called Muppet Babies. Loved Muppet Babies. Muppet Babies is fantastic. Yeah. But Rugrats, yes, I remember Rugrats. And they had the dog that looked like it was about to die any minute. Yeah, it was very, very it was old. Poorly fed. Yeah. Yeah if, you, yeah. if you thought those little babies were neglected, that <laughs> dog was dog way was more neglected. on death's door. Yeah. Those, those children, sh- much like me, should have been taken away from their parents. <laughs> Those little babies had zero supervision. Yep. The two twins were disgusting. They were <laughs> disgusting. They somehow probably had syphilis as well. They were gross. Dude. Rugrats was huge. Because you, you could not know about Rugrats. But I've never seen an episode of Hey Arnold. I have seen multiple episodes of Doug and multiple episodes of Rugrats. Well, you know, that's probably the thing. That's maybe why you don't know Hey Arnold and know Rugrats. Is because Rugrats was a little earlier, and they made like a major motion picture. Yeah, yeah, but I, I knew about it from the show. Okay. Yeah, I, when the movie came out, I already knew about it. Yeah. The show felt lame to watch, even when I was watching it. Yeah, I was probably watching it, going, "I'm too old to watch this," but it was like I think it was one of those things that started to have like quasi adult humor, and teenage humor in it that was like kind of crossed over a little bit. Oh yeah, they threw a little. Yeah, stuff yeah, in yeah, there. yeah, yeah, yeah. It was like the beginning of that kind of thing where they would throw in stuff for older people onto those. There was a uh, an episode, and this is going to sound so stupid, but it used to make it used to really upset me. And this is the people pleaser in me, where Tommy's grandfather gives them all bottles of milk, and he gives every single one of them a white milk, except he gives Tommy chocolate. Mm-hmm. And they all start fighting over the chocolate milk. Mm-hmm. And I thought it was so fucked up. I was like, dude, these are guests. Like, all these kids should get chocolate milk. <laughs> or give them all white milk. Like, you can't just, you can't show preferential treatment to your, to your grandson just because it's your grandson. I get that you want to do that, but not in front of the other kids. So the point of the episode was they shouldn't have fought over it, but you were thinking the grandpa should have known better. It's, it's on the grandfather. <laughs> I love how that stuck. These are little babies. This is what formed your moral code. It really did. Yeah. I hate when somebody's left out. That's my biggest. I issue. can't stand. I can't in conversation. I can't stand it. And and yeah, absolutely. I won't, that's why I won't cut lines. Yeah. Yeah. Hundred percent. That's that's why if I would do something like have a birthday party at a bar like you did last week, mm-hmm. I would have to get so drunk that I wasn't constantly worried about everybody having fun. Uh, well, I just get drunk anyway, just by <laughs> mechanics. How drunk was I, by the way? 
All right, let's move on to the <laughs> next uh, no. generation. You know what? You of all people can't skip over that question. What? You, you get loaded. You get that. You we we both get that loaded. I was pretty drunk that same night. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah you were loaded. Yeah. But the but the, I was dude. Loaded. You you uh, you didn't yell at me. But at one point, I was outside having a conversation with a couple of people, and you just walked out. And you were walking like nobody could see you, <laughs> and you just leaned up against the bar or the like, like the outside of the bar, and you're like kind of like looking around, like you know, you get like a look in your eyes, and you're just sitting there. And I'm like, Man, boy, why did he just by himself? And I was like, I'm gonna go talk to him, see if he wants to talk to somebody. I was like, Hey, you good? You're like, I'm good. Just, 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 just you're good. Just, just go somewhere. And I was like, I was like, Are, are you? I was like, You want like water or food? I'm fine. I'm probably going to leave soon. I'm good. I'm yeah. good. And then you just went back inside. You were there like another hour. <laughs> it was me recharging for the yeah. rest of the night. <laughs> that's what you, well, as long as I went, was I rude though? That's but, what you went outside and found an outlet. Yeah. Just plugged yourself I mean, in. I was recharged by moonlight. You weren't rude. I just understood exactly what you were doing. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. like you went out there like nobody could see you. And then I went over to see if you were okay and immediately got the vibe of you being like, hey, i came out here not to be bothered well you know what talking about people pleaser one of my regrets the next day is i didn't get to talk to you that much that night you talk to me i talked to you a little bit but not yeah. a ton and then also that mike my buddy i think you know mike brick took pictures of the night and he didn't get everybody and the next day he sent me the pictures i was like oh my god i didn't get one with fury I didn't get one with you like there's multiple pictures oh shit that just didn't happen i know and i, I felt awful about it oh wow yeah, you should. But anyway, be a, yeah. Good photographer. But it was a good time. I just I got pretty drunk pretty fast. Yeah, but that's what you're supposed to do. Yeah, totally. And I actually let there were still people there when I left, which never happens. Well, yeah, that does. Megan happen. got me out of there. Well, that's your that uh, I call that birthday party not the annual Sean Donnelly birthday party. I said it's the um annual uh, Sean Donnelly peer pressures people into staying <laughs> at a bar longer than they want to party. <laughs> Dude, it was so funny. I walked in and I was there I, I ripped a shot, and then like 10 minutes later, I was like, all right, Sean, I got to take off. And you were like, fuck you, don't even do it. <laughs> <laughs> I <started> cracking up. <laughs> the people were like trying to leave, and you just grab them by the shoulders. You're like, no, you're not. You're not leaving. You can't go. You can't go. What do you do? What do you got to do? Come on. Come on. It's Come almost on. expected at this point. Yeah. 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 People just, now I think people sneak out. People like, are Irish goodbye. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. I've gotten better with it. Foley had to leave, and I was like, okay, I understand. But I was those, I was kind of buzzed. I wasn't drunk enough yet to give him shit. Well, Colin got me back to Astoria in an Uber, and he was like, "Man, I'm so glad Elmer slept in today. Thanks for playing with him." I was like, "What? I don't even remember." Apparently, I he went up. Me, into, I went up me. into his apartment and I wrestled with his dog for like 20 minutes, and then I went home. <laughs> you forgot. You had no idea. No, I didn't remember at all. <laughs> all right, let's go back to generation separate. All right, we got two more left. Uh, these ones, I think you're definitely, uh, n- now that I got a gauge for what you are familiar with, these ones you're definitely going to know. Ren and Stimpy. Uh, I was a, f- like a huge fan. Dis- I hated that show. Why? Oh, that's right. You think it was too like hipstery. You, or you thought it was too like... Too hipstery and it was just gross. It was actually gross, but I thought it was. So- I thought the animation was really cool. And I did think there was funny parts to it. They especially sh- as like a 13-year-old. They would show like a random piece of toast that was also a superhero with like gross hair. Powder Toast Man. Yeah, that was a character. I thought you meant like they would show a close up of a nose with like a giant they would do coming the, out yeah. of it, and like yeah, they would do or like they would show like it's moldy, Ren, and then they, they, they would like zoom in on something, and there would be like all this gross mold on something, or they were like good at like details. I didn't like that. That was gross. I'll give you that, but it didn't gross me out enough not to watch it. I thought it was funny. He's like. Because Ren would be like, what was this thing? He's like, you idiot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you stupid idiot. Yeah, why Why was he like a cholo? <laughs> yeah, it was kind of racist. Actually, yeah. he was a chihuahua, so he was a medicine yeah. dog. Ren A. Fulker. was probably a white guy doing the voice. Yeah. yeah. Hey, Ren A. Fulker. <laughs> we got to go see this power toast, man. Ren is a lowrider, just pulls up on it. <laughs> All right, so you know Ren and Stimpy. Last one. This is one I just wanted to... I knew you would 100% know because it's a great show. It's one of the best cartoons ever made. But I just want to know your initial reaction to it because we were such drastically different ages when it first came out. South Park. Not only my reaction was... You're going to 
flip because not flip, but I have an interesting take. Like okay. I, you know, that was a video. T- the Jesus versus Santa thing was a videotape that was shared around before the show even existed. So I, my buddy Paul, had the videotape of just the five minute short that those guys sent out as a Christmas card, and that finally got, got the notice of some executive at Comedy Central or some kind of agent or manager. It was a five minute thing called Jesus versus Santa Claus, and people went nuts for it and passed it around on on uh, VHS. What was it? Like what was the? Video? It was it was stop motion animation. It was just like the show is, but way way more uh, raw. Raw, exactly. Or you know, so. But was their voice? Voices? They had the same. Like they had like really really rudimentary versions of the voices. Um, it was the kids. It was the kids that were like commenting on Jesus versus fighting. Jesus battled Santa Claus. Okay, you can probably look it up on YouTube. It's got to be there. Yeah. But so I knew about South Park before he was even uh, a show. And then when the show came out, it was the, one of the biggest things ever to happen because uh, everybody was already so hyped off the other thing, and you know, I guess it, whatever. Like it was, it had such a big buildup. But that show has definitely made Comedy Central a billion. It had to make them a billion yeah. dollars. Yeah, yeah. yeah. What's well, all that? It's the last remaining thing that Comedy Central South kind Park? of has. Yeah, yeah. And, right. and from what it started with, because it used to be a bunch of stand up. It used to be South Park. It used to be like old episodes of Kids in the Hall and SNL. Yep. And then now it's just South Park. But I rem- I'll never forget when it first came out. Me and my brother had adjoining rooms. And we were both watching it in separate rooms. And it was just the funniest thing that it's... I've ever seen in my life. It was the anal probe episode, right? Yeah. It was the first ever episode. Oh, that's the first one, yeah. And because we saw them teasing it for a while. And then we made sure to sit down and watch it. And my parents never cared what I watched, um, which also explains a lot. <laughs> if, 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 hey, if, if, you're ha- if you're having um, child bum fights in your apartment, <laughs> I don't think you're going to care about a couple explicit words a cartoon, in yeah. a cartoon. But do they care about this? No, my mom actually took me to the movies. To see, or no, 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 not my mom. She took me that year to see Little Nicky. My dad took me to the movies to see the South Park movie. That's awesome. The movie's pretty great, too. Or no, maybe it was my mom. I don't remember, but I know that when I told people that I saw it in theaters, all my friends were so pissed. The greatest thing about South Park is to this day, with all the politics stuff that goes back and forth within comedy, South Park, they do not give a fuck. Teflon. They have not. They're Teflon. They haven't stopped. Uh, I heard they used to do a trick... With censors, you know, if censors certain censors don't want certain things on the show because it's either offensive or it's brand mentioning, whatever it is, they would purposely go super last minute with the animation so the censors would have to let through way more. So instead of them having the, the censors having the episode four days before it airs, yeah, they'd have it two days or a day or two days. That's smart. And then they'd be like, they'd have to let shit through because we had to put this on because it was South Park and it was a big deal. They're amazing. They're amazing. Those guys do not care which which kind of proves that you like a lot of that stuff is a little bs uh, don't get me wrong i think there's there's a lot of nonsense that goes on but if that is true then how is south park even still on the air like how is that even a thing they haven't they did they slow down did they kind of get softer no. not even close M- my thing with comedy has always been that i think you can make a joke about anything right I don't think that there's anything off limits. That's how I think. But there is this like imaginary graph where if it's about something this sensitive or this offensive, it has to be this funny. Do you know what I mean? Like it's like a it's like a curve. Oh yeah. And like or smart take on it. Yeah. And they their hit rate is so high that even if they do have one that is bad joke, too sensitive of a topic. They get a pass because that's like one in two hundred. Yep. Well, dude, and then also they do have what people will tell you is it's a cartoon, so they get away with way more, which has been the complaint of a lot of comedy shows and comics over the years. Like, why can a cartoon say this, but you can't say this on stage? You can't, whatever it is. But I will say another show kind of similar that I've been rewatching, dude, with some of the most brutal. But amazing jokes I've ever heard. I'm like laughing out loud is Veep. I don't know if you watch Veep. Veep's phenomenal. The right, the, the jokes, and this, it only ended a couple years ago, right? Yeah. 2019 or something, whatever, or a few years ago. So none of this stuff was still going on, and the jokes that they had on this show are so cutting, and, and they're real people saying them, not a cartoon, obviously. But I mean, like, 
it brilliant. So brilliant. And like you're saying, smart but offensive. So I don't think anybody's noticing. I just rewatched it too. I rewatched Did you? it like, like a year ago. It is it's unbelievable one of my how good that show is. It's out of control how good it is. JLD is next. Uh, well, she's, she's, I think she's her best. Uh, you know, I, I like Carol Burnett, but I'm like, you put Carol Burnett up against Julie Louis, Louise Dreyfus, not just based on the stuff that I like that she's in, which, well, yeah, that, but also I'm just saying sheer, like, sheer just absolute notches on the belt and absolute freaking bangers. She just wins. This is going to get... She's way more legendary than Carol Burnett at this point. This is going to sound blasphemous about Carol Burnett. Do you know how I used to always get her mixed up with? Vicky Lawrence? Yes. Yeah, but they were on the show together, too. That's, I didn't oh, want to do that. Yeah. Okay. But the fact that you know who Vicky Lawrence is, and we do Generation Separation, but you, that's what's weird about you with Generation Separation. You're like, hey, what about Hey Arnold? But you also know who Vicky Lawrence is because of your siblings. Well, I know who Vicky Lawrence is because... So when lose a draw? Because I used to fake sick a lot to not go to school, and I would watch Mama's Family. Oh yeah, day. Mama's Family. That was a that was a sketch on Carol Burnett show. I couldn't watch an episode of that show now. Mama's Family. Yeah, this wouldn't make sense. It feels weird. For me, it'd be more nostalgic. Yeah. Like now, I'm getting to the age now where I'm so excited, like I'm freaking out about nostalgia stuff, like stuff like like there's clips that show up my TikTok, and I if it's something that I get nostalgic, I'll I'll hit a follow right away. Oh, wow. Right away. If it's like an old, it'll be like an old car commercial. And I'll be like, boom, you got it. Well, I think this um, talk about pop culture right now is going to lead us into our jerk off and a nice way to put a bow on this episode. What do you say? Let's do it. The jerk off, uh, it's something I can't believe we haven't touched on in the last few weeks. But uh, these episodes have just been so action packed, full of hilarious <laughs> content. Coming at you. Um, and it is who's a bigger jerk? Johnny Depp or Amber Heard in the jerk off? A lot of people are following. I was going to go outside the box and say the people who are keep posting stupid clips of this trial, which I could care less about. Um, but who was the one that shit in the bed? Amber, Amber Heard. Heard. Amber Heard. She's the bigger jerk. She's shit in a bed. Well, yeah. Is because it's to me, it seems like this trial, everybody's pretending like it's for real when it seems because didn't he apparently he already sued her in Europe or in another country and they threw it away, they threw it out because of sufficient evidence or something like that. She he, he didn't win, he lost. You might be right that the biggest jerk is neither of them and it's everybody calling attention to it. This trial has been going on way longer than a lot of other big trials. Why are we so obsessed with this rich people argument? You know, it just made me think of it. I, I didn't think of because I had another answer. And it just made me think of it when you said, this has already been done in Europe. Imagine how privileged and wealthy you have to be to have trials about the same <laughs> shit in multiple countries. The defamation. Yeah. yeah. Or gonna, not defamation about whatever. The, whatever. Uh, yeah. I don't yeah. know anything about legal system, clearly. I don't know anything about Napoleon. I don't know anything about... I don't, I don't know much. <laughs> but what I... I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. Oh. That would be... All I need. A little Aaron Neville for that ass. <laughs> Well, I will say this, really quick. Ever since the Will Smith slap, I don't give a shit about these people. I don't. I like Johnny Depp, Amber Heard. I don't even know what she does. I like him as an actor. If you really hit her, he's an asshole. But I'm not going to sit there and watch hours of a trial. They're not real people. That's like asking me, uh, "Hey, you going to watch the Jada Pinkett Will Smith divorce trial?" No, because they're fucking aliens, and I don't give a shit about them. I have a hot take. Let's hear it. I fucking hate Johnny Depp so much. Always or because of this? Always. This actually made me like him more. It's, I will say that. The clips, there are things I've seen where things come up and him laughing at it is pretty funny to watch. That's the things that I've been like, okay, that was an actual real moment of this guy reacting. But it's still, I, you idiot, for make, making this part of the lexicon. I think he's one of the most overrated actors in cinema history. I think he met Tim Burton and with Tim Burton was like, hey, be weird for an hour and a half. And then he did that for the next 25 years. Is It was like, yeah. what? hey, what movie can we make where we put Johnny Depp in gothic makeup and he walks like a homosexual and talks in a weird voice? Ed Wood? 
Is that what you're saying? Everyone? That was Pirates of the Caribbean, but it could have been either. <laughs> Edward well, actually, Scissorhands. It's not, southern, it's not Southern, but yeah, 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 yeah. Edward Scissorhands. I didn't say Southern. I said like a homosexual. Oh, yeah, that's kind of, that's Ed Wood. Wasn't yeah. Ed Wood a homosexual? I don't I like know. you're saying homosexual. Any, well, I don't want to be politically uh, correct. Okay. Well, here's the thing. Uh, Edward it. Scissorhands, it was the OG, it was the start of all this, is, he is great in that playing a weird, like, that is a good... But then he did that every other movie. Well, no, no, but it was different characters. That is, you know, that is true. Pirate, was, Pirates of the Caribbean, he just played a homosexual Keith Richards. Let me throw a thing in here to get your opinion. A non-Tim Burton, Blow. Blow's good. I like Blow. You like him and Blow or in you like Blow? In spite of him. In spite of him. So he's not good in it. No. You, anything he does, you just don't he like it. just... Every time I see him on screen, he is never the character to me. He is Johnny Depp being a creep and being weird. Yeah, he was like, he was a guy, he had that like DiCaprio thing, but went like the oddball way. DiCaprio has been trying to be, make himself ugly for 25 years, but he can't do it. The guy's too good looking of a guy. He's been, gotten himself fatter. He's like, I'm getting older. I'm going to grow some scruff. I'm going to do these parts where I'm supposed to be a regular person. But nobody, only recently people are like, okay, now we believe you're a normal person. Johnny Depp, that he was a heartthrob, 21 Jump Street, heartthrob guy, could have very easily just become a TV guy, let's be honest. He should have But he, just, he had such a big, big, he had such heat behind him. He, people just decided he was amazing, and then he went into, okay, I'm going to be the character guy. He's like, he's like the Mike Myers of drama. He is. Because Mike, I was, I was listening to Rewatchables, one of our favorite movie podcasts, and they were talking about that's what Mike Myers does. He loves Peter Sellers. He gets into a character. He, he finds that character and then either knocks it out of the park or it kind of shits the bed a little bit. But when you're saying method acting, I never see it as not Johnny Depp. Like, again, I'll keep going back to Pirates what, of the nah, Caribbean. You could say Pirates of the Caribbean, just, I, I've never seen any of them. Uh, yeah. I have kind of zero interest in that stuff. Ed Wood? No. Blow, yeah, is kind of him. But yeah, you're right. Dark Shadow, Sweeney Todd. It's all him just playing sort of a gay vampire. <laughs> Johnny Depp, sort of a gay vampire. Hey, and not that there's anything wrong with there's that. There's nothing wrong with that. Yeah, Being though. a vampire. <laughs> you could be a vampire. Has, but he's actually never been one and probably should have been. Oh, was he in was Dark Shadows a vampire? I didn't even I see didn't that. I didn't see it. I saw the preview and I made a judgment call. Yeah. Well, like we're going to end on that sour note of you hating on my brother, Johnny Depp. Your brother, Johnny Depp. <laughs> he was also Whitey Bulger. And that movie was bad. And he also, in that, somehow looked like a GV. Yeah. <laughs> he looked so weird in that. Yeah. yeah. Whitey Bulger didn't look like <laughs> sure. that. He looks like fucking Doctor Evil. No, he like with he, sunglasses. Yeah, he looks like a he does look like a vampire. They didn't even shave his head to put the bald cap on. He looks like he he looks like Stewie Griffin. Yeah, he it looks weird, and then he he has like the weird eye thing, and I'm like, I don't think that's what this guy does looks like. Does he even do a Boston accent? He does. It's not bad, but it's it's. I, it's I, I turned the movie off. It's like really, it's bad. I bet it's awful. All right, let's get out of here, my friend. All right, guys. Sure. Just so you know, once again. YouTube, YouTube, YouTube. You can look us up. Brand New Jerks. Search us. Subscribe. Check out all the videos that are going to be coming your way. You, there's already some episodes up there. There's a couple of videos. We're going to be taping a couple of things this summer that you can check out. Check out both me and Ray on Instagram. Ray? Ray be killing them. And I'm at Shawnee Time. Check us out on TikTok. Uh, subscribe to the podcast. Tell your friends about it. Guys, also, our email is... BrandNewJerks at gmail.com. This is the Summer of the Jerks. Uh, New Jerk Summer. <laughs> so make sure to check us out. Tell your friends and shit. Thank you so much for listening. We never forgot where we came from um, because I personally am not that far off from where I came from. <laughs> send us your jerk store moments, your jerk offs. Send us the whole, every section we have. Uh, your generation separations, if you want, you know where me and uh, me and me and Ray lie. And jerk offs, so sending us your jerk off. We do need to clarify that is just you picking two jerks yes. and seeing which is worse. Don't jerk just send off. us both videos of you jerking <laughs> off. But if you want to send them just to me, I will review them. <laughs> and for a price, I'll give you a rating. Okay, Ray, it's time. All right, here we go. Awkward handshake. Good night. Good night.